Checking it. One, two, three. All my levels are good. Stream has started on YouTube. All is good. Hello, everyone. So I've been going through the solo mode. Uh, I wanted to make a video on it, but I also want to finish up, and I wanted to do this and that, and just, oh, what a week. I've got a little bit left to go on the solo game mode, the Colossus stuff, as well as the trait cards. I can't wait to read through them, but I wanted to make sure I got them all correct on this solo game mode. And uh, I talked about doing a stream, and this is actually a good idea, is just kind of going through the solo mode together. Uh, all of us kind of reading through. I've already read through most of this, and we'll just go through the Colossus game mode real quick. Uh, so first, uh, this is the, uh, for update 35, it is our kind of first, look over all the like like pdf kind of stuff that would be coming with the battle of rivet that core game box mode um we've been tearing through it uh learning a lot about some of the changes that has come to rivet wars so let's jump right in so solo mode allows a singular player to play rivet wars against ai opponents uh which they refer to as colossus uh, these rules can be used to play standalone scenarios or campaign scenarios. In um, campaign scenarios, and actually a lot of the scenarios in the book, in the scenario book, they have a solo mode Colossus section that kind of gives you extra little rules to update what we're about to read. This is in the alternate game mode packet. So this is going to be covering everything on a big, like generic circuit, and then... Uh, each scenario will have specific ones, which we will touch on, but we won't go through all of them. I don't know how much time we'll have. In solo mode, the AI opponent is always referred to as Colossus, and you will always be referred to as the player. Uh, when setting up, follow a uh, standard game setup for Battle Rivet, and follow these additional steps. So you're going to choose a faction for you. Who do you want to play as? And choose a faction for Colossus. Who do you want to fight against? Take the miniatures, stat cards, you know, split them up. Gather the trait cards, return any cards for factions Colossus isn't playing to the game box, then shuffle the remaining cards to form the trait deck and place it face down near the battlefield. That's this deck of trait cards that I can't wait to get into. I really want to. So you got to get your trait cards ready. Uh, there's different ones for different factions. So split them up, only the faction they're playing as. Uh, remove the infantry deployment order cards, then shuffle the remaining deployment cards to create a deployment deck for Colossus. Uh, the infantry deployment order card, I think that is this one. Infantry assault is the first one. I think it means this first one, the infantry assault. Um, remove the infantry deployment order card, then shuffle the remaining deployment cards to create a deployment deck for Colossus. Place it face down near the battlefield, then place the infantry deployment card face down on top of the deck. What this is basically saying is for the deployment cards, which we'll talk about, they cover it further down. Make sure this one is the absolute first one that is drawn. Uh, it is the easiest one to, to go with, and it will make sense for a first turn. That's all that rule is saying. So uh, shuffle the deck. Place the rate card near the mission cards for the scenario. Um... Place the rate token to zero. This is another card. I probably should have that up for when we're discussing it. Um, so Colossus does not complete missions. Not in the same way a human player would. Here we go. Uh, so Colossus doesn't do missions in the same way. So here they have five mission cards. And just at certain rounds, at certain points in the scenario, uh, they get basically a mission card and it goes up. And I believe it's when they get to five, they win. They'll talk about it in the wrap-up phase and things. Um, they definitely talk about the rate. But this is the card they're talking about. It'll be a rate card uh, that he gets instead of missions. So for Colossus, there's a time limit on how long games go. So here we go. Make sure it's on zero. Solo mode is like standard Rivet Wars with some differences. Colossus follows a modified set of rules that affects every phase of their turn as detailed in the following pages. That's what we're reading right now is all the different ways Colossus acts versus a normal opponent in Rivet Wars. Certain scenarios will have additional rules. Yep, we talked about these. 
Um, Colossus doesn't complete mission cards like a regular player. Instead, they complete mission cards periodically throughout the game. Uh, that's that scenario tracker uh, that I just showed. Colossus doesn't acquire or use action cards. They instead gain similar effects through trait card pulling. So they will get trait cards. Again, that's what I want to go through if we have time. Numbered scenario elements. Each scenario has numbered elements such as strategic objectives. These are mainly used when playing as Colossus. It is recommended that players use numbered tokens instead included with the game to number parts of the battlefield as shown in the scenario wrap, uh, scenario setup. Uh, so these numbered elements you can see are what they're talking about. So when you set up a, uh, a scenario, you have the deviation cards and uh, unit order cards set up. You have it set up the way that it is described based on the components. Uh, but there's also these numbered elements. So each of the deployment zones are numbered. Each of the objectives are numbered. Uh, golden rule. Uh, this is a long story short. When playing Rivet Wars against Colossus, the special rule may result in situations arising where uh, there won't be a clear solution. Uh, in these instances, you will be required to make a choice for Colossus. In this instance, make the choice that you believe benefits Colossus most. AKA, you are literally playing with yourself with no accountability. There's just some cards and some rules for playing solo. Um, obviously, you can cheat. The golden rule is it doesn't matter playing with Colossus uh, as your enemy if you're going to cheat. Um, obviously, you'll win or you'll break the logic setup. So in order for it to work as intended and as tested, you got to follow the rules. You got to do what's best for them uh, whenever that instance comes up. Uh, if you're unsure, make your best guess uh, for them rather than overanalyzing the situation. It's more important to keep the game moving uh, than to get focused on every possible option available to Colossus. Um, do what's best for them. Do your best as if you wanted them to win uh, in those situations, but do not get bogged down by choice. Makes sense. Uh, in the end, you are playing by yourself. Uh, so it's that kind of that double-edged sword. There is uh, do what's best, but don't get bogged down by if you don't know what the absolute best scenario is. During the control phase, Colossus draws trait and deployment cards and places a flag token on a strategic objective they currently occupy. That's not new from uh, different rules. To resolve Colossus's control phase, follow the steps. So discard any previous trait and deployment cards. So they don't get to keep trait cards like action cards. So uh, they'll be discarded. Uh, dis discard the deployment card because they won't be using that again. Draw a brand new trait card and deployment card. Place flag tokens on each one controlled by Colossus, just like a normal person. Very good. Uh, if the trader deployment card deck runs out of cards, shuffle them uh, from the discard pile and form a new deck with the newly shuffled cards. Easy peasy. All this is understandable. So now they're going to talk about trait cards. The anatomy of trait cards. Uh, trait cards provide Colossus with unique special rules and effects, replacing the action cards and a player would normally use. So we got card name, faction, uh, so certain trait cards have factions, so if they're playing as allies, uh, they're like this one showed, uh, that is only if Colossus is the allies. They are more themed, uh, we'll, when we go through the trait cards, we'll go through them. There are also trait cards that are not associated with a faction. Those are for everybody to use regardless of what faction he's playing at the time. Um, so just keep the Nemoan and Blight cards out of the allied deck when they're playing as allies. Simple. And then the effect. What does the trait card do? We'll be going through trait cards. Uh, deployment cards. Deployment cards are determined. Card name, priority. Um, this confused me a little bit. Because there isn't a priority in any of the examples. All the examples are kind of blued out. Um, so I don't think that this is in this version yet. They're still being finalized. Uh, which is fine. But just know that whether Colossus will deploy the highest or lowest cost units available. They'll give us a rundown of an example later on in the pages. 
Um, so we will go through that example uh, in greater detail when we get to it. Uh, unit type symbols, these are the types of units in the order. It is from top down, um, which again we'll go through in the example. Uh, rivet token limit, the maximum number of rivet tokens Colossus may spend on this deployment card uh, or this turn. Um, so uh, Colossus keeps rivets like a normal player would, um, but just in case, you know, he has like five or six um, like in this example given, the max he would be able to use on going down this line of who to deploy would be two rivets. So it kind of keeps it in check that way. Deployment cards do not make distinction between standard units and hero units. So Colossus will take hero units into account as it would any standard unit uh, of the same type when uh, determining whether which unit to deploy. Uh, my thought process is when they say highest cost cards, I know they literally mean deployment tokens and um, rivets, but after you played Colossus for a bit, I would take into effect heroes and uh, units with uh, VPs as holding a higher cost to deploy. Um, and I would probably also lean on those uh, after a few games after you get the hang of colossus and you're not strictly following that uh, try to think about uh which hero units would be really good to deploy um as a more expensive option all right here we go at the de beginning of the deployment phase colossus gains uh deployment points and rivet tokens same as a normal player uh based on the scenario these are spent to deploy new units on the battlefield as determined by the card. To resolve the deployment phase for the Colossus, follow the steps. Colossus gains the points and rivets based on the scenario. If Colossus is the first player during the first round, they gain half the listed deployment points rounded up and don't gain any rivet tokens. This is a new rule for all of River Wars. So if they go first, they're just like a normal player where they uh, go first on that very first round, they get half the resources to, uh, to deploy units. Draw and resolve a deployment card. Uh, so we'll go through that in a second, how you resolve that and go through it step by step. Keep going until Colossus runs out of deployment points, unit type symbols on the deployment card, space in all their deployment areas, miniatures to deploy, deploy entirely etc like basically just keep going until there's no possible way they can deploy anymore uh it does not make any sense for them to skip a deployment or to not deploy and let deployment po points go to waste so do your best to uh, give them the benefit of the doubt and deploy as much things as possible to deploy units for colossus refer to the symbols on the cards uh, starting with the top symbol and move down. So check the priority of the deployment card. We don't have any examples of that, but that's either going to be high or uh, high or cheap units. Locate the highest or lowest cost uh, dependent on that priority unit of the type in the reserve. Pay the deployment points and rivet tokens for that unit. Place the unit onto the battlefield in the highest numbered deployment area first. Repeat steps two to four until a number of units have been deployed equal to the number shown on the symbol or until Colossus can't de deploy units of that type and then move on to the next symbol. Some deployment cards will show unit type symbols not featured in the Battle of Rivet. These are used for units found in expansions. If you do not have the relevant expansion, these symbols are skipped. This isn't in reference to they have air stuff built into the Colossus cards in this base set. So there are some references to air units. Uh, we don't have those at this time. So you would just skip those. So like this one is the new bomber or heavy air unit symbol. Because uh, they're now broken up to heavy and light. Uh, they have like the, the scout helicopter here. as like a light air unit. Uh, they also have this one right here, 
They have air plugs, uh, just like the classic River Wars had regular plugs and specific air plugs. Um, so those are still in the game. So those references are obviously for air units. Deployment priority, uh, we kind of talked about this to death and it'll be easier in the example, but deployment cards will show one of two priority symbols. They specify whether it'll be the lowest cost or highest cost unit. Each unit symbol they resolve during that deployment phase. Uh, when resolving deployment cards with this symbol, deploy the highest cost unit in the reserve uh, based on deployment points. If Colossus has multiple units of the same deployment point cost, deploy which of these has the highest rivet token value. Um, so go by deployment points first, then what uh, rivet token is available. When resolving this symbol, uh, deploy the lowest cost units in Colossus Reserve based on the deployment points. If Colossus has multiple units of the same deployment point, uh, deploy which of those has the lowest rivet token value. So high and low. I give an example, but they have a whole example down here we're going to go through. So we are going to skip this example. Spending deployment points. To deploy units, reduce the number of deployment points and rivet tokens has by the cost of the unit. Colossus can't spend more rivet tokens this turn than the limit shown on the deployment card. Regardless of the number of rivet tokens they currently have, we've already kind of talked about this, um, it, but they do keep unspent rivet tokens for future cards. Not all cards have that limit, um, and that is actually a good thing to ask about. Cards with no limit, do they have no limit, or is the limit they can't spend rivet tokens? I will read a little bit farther to see if they talk about that. Um, but that is something I want to ask. If Colossus doesn't have any units matching the unit type symbol in their reserve or doesn't have enough deployment points or river tokens to deploy units of that type, move on to the next symbol. When Colossus deploys a unit, place it in the highest numbered deployment area uh, that has space for that unit. If there's no space for that unit in any of Colossus's deployment areas, the unit can't be deployed and you would skip it and try a different unit based on that um, qualification. Uh, when deploying a plug, deploy them onto the closest available, uh, available unit. Uh, Colossus deployment phase will eventually end for one of four reasons. Uh, they ran out of deployment points, they ran out of unit type symbols, uh, Colossus ran out of space. Colossus ran out of miniatures. I like this redundancy. We've already seen this uh, in at least two areas already, but it's in a different format. Like in every part of the book, if you're reading through while you're playing through, you'll have the information you need. I am actually a big fan of that redundancy so that it is crystal clear. Um, now that we've gone through this, let's go through this big old example they have. So they have pulled the card, Call in the Heroes. Uh, we don't know what it is, but they will tell us down below. I think this is highest priority. They'll let us know. Uh, we have two rivet limit. So Colossus is playing as the Blight. And they have five deployment points and three rivet uh, tokens to spend based on the scenario. The deployment card for this turn prioritizes the highest cost units, but limits them to spending a maximum of two rivet tokens this turn despite them having three so they'll only be able to use two that is absolutely fine the first symbol is the infantry unit so colossus deploys the most expensive infantry unit in their reserve including a hero uh this is assuming this is the battle of rivet base set that is a good assumption for them to do in the rule book um just to throw that out there uh, the most expensive unit in this type is the Colossus can afford to deploy is either Major Ye Jaeger Moldenstein or Gaston Tenken. As both cost the same amount, the player follows the golden rule and opts for Major Jaeger Moldenstein to be deployed, spending three deployment points and one rivet token on that deployment. And as we know, it's not said here, uh, they'll deploy that in the highest marked deployment zone first so that means he'll put 
a Jaeger Moldenson in this deployment zone first. The infantry unit symbol shows two, so a second infantry unit must be deployed. So we see that little two, so we deployed one. However, the most expensive infantry unit they can now afford to deploy is a Panzerfaust spending one deployment point and zero rivets. So they will deploy that again. There's space for it in the highest amount. So it would be in this number two slot, uh, that highest amount. Colossus then moves on because it, it was two up here, then moves on to the other unit type symbols. They can skip the support and cavalry and light aircraft unit symbols as they don't have any of these unit types that they can afford to deploy from their reserve with only the remaining single deployment point and one rivet token. Um, so it's the base set. They don't have the scout thing. Is that what they called it? Light aircraft. Uh, so they don't have a light aircraft um, with support and cavalry. There's none that cost only one deployment point with the mono wheels and Schlitten and things of that nature. So this leads them back to the final infantry at the bottom, which has a thing of four. The most expensive one that they can spend is, again, a Panzerfaust. So they'll spend that one deployment point getting the Panzerfaust, which they will again put right in the number two slot, which is the highest. So they have three infantry units in there at the moment. At this point, Colossus stops deploying units due to being out of deployment points and not having any units that only cost a single rivet token. We don't know what future factions will have um, or look like, So, but that, that is an option. But because they have nothing else, you've reached the end. They're kind of out of all their points. So the deployment ends. Right at the end, many scenarios will see Colossus gaining or losing deployment tokens when a new deployment token is added. Uh, number it on the higher than the current highest numbered deployment token. When Colossus removes the deployment token, if multiple deployment tokens fit the criteria, remove the highest numbered deployment token first. If we are adding a new one, let's say we're in a uh, scenario we add one into our bunker when we get a certain amount of points. We have one, we have two. We would add three into this bunker. If we are removing some because things are moving, the first one we would remove is number two. And then we'd be left with this one left. I'm going to take off this helmet. Ooh. Combat phase. During the combat phase, the units make their attack uh, one at a time. Each unit may only make its attack once per turn. So we select the area containing... Colossus units that are farthest away from your own units. So you're going from the back forward with, as Colossus. That, whichever way makes uh, more sense, uh, their farthest away units attack first. Um, select unit, but needs to attack using the attack sequence. Remember to apply the golden rule if necessary. Continue selecting units until every unit in the area has attacked. Repeat steps one to three until all the areas containing class units have attacked. Obviously, if they can't attack, they can't attack. So you would move on to the next one. Check the range of the attacking unit and select an area using Colossus's target priority. Check Colossus's unit for any special rules and buffs that affect attacks. Choose which of Colossus units attack profiles it will use using Colossus's attack priority and check it for any special attack symbols. These are things like blast attacks, gas attacks, anything of that nature. Using the targeting card, identify which of your units the attack will target. Check your unit for any special rules and buffs and uh, that will affect attacks. Compare your unit's armor class to the attack profile to see how many uh, D6's Colossus will roll. Roll the dice if the attack hits, cause a point of damage to your own unit. Uh, if the attacking unit can make more than one attack, repeat these steps until all the attacks have been made. This is all very simple, very easy. Uh, Colossus attack priority. Uh, when Colossus chooses units to attack, it will use this priority. So it's looking for enemy units on a strategic objective. 
uh, enemy units that Colossus will roll the highest number of dice against. And then after that, it's just looking for the closest enemy unit that it can hit. Uh, going through those, there should be some reason they can hit someone with that. If there are no enemies that can be damaged within the unit's range, the unit uses the action on its card if it has one. Otherwise, the unit doesn't attack this turn. Colossus attack priority. Colossus units has multiple attack profiles listed on their stack card. Start with the attack listed on the top and work downwards. If Colossus unit has an attached plug uh, with an attack profile, Colossus will attack with the unit first and then the plug second. Ooh, that's very interesting. I always do them in a different order. When choosing a unit to attack with, choose them in the order that allows all units to be able to attack as effectively as possible, or that allows them to make the most use of their special rules. If the Schlitten can't hit um, the Riflemen because they're hiding behind a rocket cycle, you would instead attack with the Panzerfaust first, and then the rocket cycle to try, or the, the Schlitten, just to make more use of everyone's abilities rather than saying, oh, they can't attack, so nothing, nothing's coming of that. Spoke too much. This is literally the next example they were given. So Colossus, as the allies, is attacking with an area uh, with two riflemen and a rocket cycle. The riflemen can't damage the monowheel dragoon in areas one and three, as their attack profiles give them no dice against that armor class of two. Instead, the rocket cycle should attack first to attempt to destroy the monowheel with both of its attacks. If the Mono World Dragoon is destroyed, now the Riflemen are able to attack the Panzerfaust. This is kind of blocking these two units. So you want to attack first to try to knock this one out so that these two get their full chance against these two. Now we're on to the movement phase. During the movement phase, Colossus moves each of their units one area at a time, starting with the area closest to Colossus deployment. To reserve, resolve the movement phase, follow these steps in order. Select an area containing units that belong to Colossus. Check any buffs that would affect movement to units in that area. Select a unit in the area that unit may move up to its move value. Uh, repeat steps three until you move every unit. Repeat step one to four until you've selected all other units and move them. Rearrange units belonging to Colossus. Uh, I'm assuming that in the best order possible. So protecting heroes behind other units, protecting infantry behind higher armored units, etc. Whenever you're moving, use the following movement priorities. Infantry, move towards the closest strategic objective that doesn't contain a friendly unit or a flag token. If there are multiple closest strategic objectives, Move toward the highest numbered of the strategic objectives first. If Colossus has a friendly unit or a flag token on every strategic objective, move the infantry unit using the other unit type's priority below. So for everyone else, or if they're dominating, move the unit towards the closest enemy unit that, can, that it can cause damage to. If there are no damageable enemy units on the battlefield, Move the, the unit towards the closest enemy deployment area. Absolutely vicious. So there'll be no Blight Wall with Colossus. They are on the invasion path. When moving Colossus's units, don't move their units into squares that would cause damage to them, such as minefields or gas tokens, unless it's the only option available. Rearrange areas with Colossus units using the allied side of the targeting card. Place units with the higher armor classes in lower numbered squares than the units with lower armor class classes. Jeez, excuse me. If there are different unit types with the same armor class, place any infantry units in higher numbered squares. Here we go, the wrap-up phase. During the wrap-up phase, Colossus gains victory points. For each strategic objective, they occupy and manage manages their mission cards. To resolve the wrap-up phase, follow these in order. Remove your flag tokens from strategic objectives occupied by Colossus units. Colossus gains VPs for strategic objectives they occupy. I move the rate token one space up the rate card. Check uh, mission rate. 
check victory conditions for the scenario. Colossus scoring strategic objectives. Colossus scores one VP for each strategic objective occupied by their units, flag tokens, or both. Instead of completing missions like a regular player, Colossus completes mission cards periodically throughout the game. This is controlled by the mission rate for the scenario, as well as the rate card and token. During the wrap-up phase, the rate token moves one space up the rate card. Then the player checks the mission rate for the scenario. If the rate token is on the space indicated by the scenario, place a flag token on the leftmost mission card that does not have one of Colossus's flag tokens and reset the rate token to zero. Oh, I see. We went to basic training, solo rules, mission rate three. So what this means is for every wrap up phase, starts at zero. So for every wrap up phase, it'd move up one. So every time it hits three, it gets reset, and you put a flag token on. And then it goes up one, two, three. That's six rounds, and we get two. That's nine rounds, and go one. Okay, so it's not that hard. So it's not five total rounds, and then you're done. It's based on the rate. Very interesting. So this rate is three. This rate is three. Are there any that aren't three? Well, they're just leaving that open-ended, so maybe down the line, custom ones or something could be a different mi mission rate. A lot of these seem to be three, which would still give you nine rounds of trying to get victory points or complete objectives before they win via this mission rate. That feels really fair, unless it was a very big, like, 10 VP game. That feels pretty fair. And that's just that's just at three. That's not even at five. This is a, this is pretty open for pretty big games. Refer to the scenario to see if Colossus has enough VPs to win or has met any of the other scenario specific victory conditions. If Colossus meets the victory conditions of the scenario, they win. Otherwise, play continues. If the player has not taken their turn this round, they do so. Uh, if both Colossus and the player have taken their turns, the round has ended. Modify solo mode difficulty. When playing with Colossus, you may find they are too easy or too difficult in your games. And you may wish to make the following changes to tailor the difficulty to provide a more fun experience for yourself by making any of the following changes. To reduce the difficulty of Colossus. Decrease the number of deployment points Colossus gains. That's a pretty easy way to like if you're really uh, if you're if you're training a new player and you are very good, um, giving yourself even a single less deployment point really can change the feel of a lot of the base scenarios. Um, so that's a pretty standard way. Uh, increase the mission rate of the scenario. That's right. Uh, I think three is nine rounds i think that's already pretty good like someone's winning by victory points however I increasing it by one i mean most scenarios are three cards so that is like exponentially increasing the amount of rounds it takes that is pretty crazy that is a good way to do it basically you don't want them to win that cheat way crank that up to five or even just take it out of the game altogether Decrease the number of missions needed for the player to win the game. This is something else I was thinking of. Is like, hey, just complete two missions and you win as well. Um, increasing the difficulty is increasing the number of deployment points Colossus gains. I don't like this um, as a harder, but yeah, that would definitely make it harder. Decrease the mission rate for the scenario. This feels like, you know, turn that up. Like, you need to move. Uh, you need to win and dominate by victory points or you absolutely need to get on um the missions and doing them as quickly as possible to get three before them uh even moving that down to two would uh again i guess it's an exponential decrease in the other direction going from nine to going to six rounds that's uh that's a pretty big difference when you're uh when, when you're doing these kind of game stuff. Um, increase the number of missions needed for the player to win the game. Very easy. 
Um, I would also suggest things like removing their limit on rivet tokens if they are doing the most expensive units. Um, that's a good one. Limiting the amount of units the player can play as while letting them have access to as many players as they can. Um, giving them... Uh, we have one neutral unit with the Viking guy, Hammerson, or whatever his name is. Uh, giving him to the the other player, um, uh, giving him to Colossus and not using him yourself, that you don't know how that would affect the game. There are so many ways to change the way a Rivet Wars game could work or, or swing one way or another. Um, it truly could be giving them something as simple as using, it looks like we're getting standalone um, trench tiles. So using one of those to, that's it, we did it. We got through the solo mode. We got through Colossus. So these are the trait cards. These are what they're using instead of action cards. These are trait cards. So we have clear. Uh, so these, all these ones have no faction. So these are the open for, they use them all the time. Clear them out. When Colossus units attack an infantry unit, they roll plus one die this turn. All of when Colossus's units attack units, they roll plus one die this turn. So all of them. That is, oh, geez. All right, so that's crazy. Tank Buster. When Colossus's units attack a tank unit, they roll plus one die this turn for all their units. Uh, this is rough. Yeah. Take and hold. Colossus's non-hero infantry units gain plus one movement this turn. That makes sense. Rivet Rain, Colossus gains plus one rivets this turn. Feet on the ground, Colossus gains plus two blank this turn. That can only be spent on infantry units. So that must be an older version of deployment points. It seems to be unused, because that's the only thing that would make sense. Production line would be just gain an extra deployment point this turn. Split Deployment. During this deployment phase, Colossus deploys their units as follows. In order of highest to lowest numbered deployment squares, Colossus deploys a unit on each friendly deployment square. When Colossus has deployed a unit on each deployment square, repeat this until Colossus can't deploy any more units. What does this mean? So this is deployment areas on the map. Hunger down. The two of Colossus's units closest to enemy deployment square gain a shield token. That's very interesting that this is probably why Colossus is so hard to beat. These are like getting massive game-changing perks each round. This is a powerful one. I can't wait to get a deck and actually like see how many of each card is in the deck. And then also like give this a shot. Like that's so crazy. So now we're in the Blight cards. You can tell this by the Blight token. Gas Vents. Place a face-up gas token on each strategic objective that isn't occupied by one of Colossus units or flag tokens. Holy crap! Again, this is so powerful. Okay. Until Colossus' next turn, their units gain immune to gas. Immune to gas, this unit takes no damage from gas attacks or tokens. Yeah, see? Just game changer. Ooh, gas grenades. Colossus's infantry units add gas to their attacks this turn. Until Colossus's next turn, their units gain immunity to gas. I guess it doesn't say that they get the choice for them not to be gas. So I guess that means that the Panzerfaust all have gas attacks now. And the way the rules work, that means they wouldn't be able to attack most of the heavy armors like tanks. Because they all have some form of immunity to gas, or most of them do. So, uh, that's what's so big about the Baron Munchen guards, is that they have that um, ammo type special that lets them choose. Because you want them to still be able to hit tanks with their normal attacks. But they don't do so well against infantry, which you could choose to be a gas cloud, which would do much different damage as a gas cloud. So, that would be very interesting. And this doesn't give them that option. But for most of the games that you're going to be playing like this, that wouldn't be a godsend. That would be the Panzerfaust raining gas 
onto objectives and into bunkers and all over the place. Gas tanks. Insert Colossus next turn. When one of their units is destroyed, place a face-up gas token on its square. That's cool. I love the flavor. I do have to admit I love the flavor. I love that there's a lot of gas stuff with the blight. I'm really loving the flavor with this. And so Colossus next turn, their units gain immunity to gas. Awesome. Now let's figure out how allies are overpowered. <laughs> Quick off the mark. After a unit is deployed in Colossus deployment phase this turn, move them as if it were the movement phase. These units don't move during the movement phase. So giving all units that are deployed during the deployment phase rapid assault with their movement. It's not going to be overly helpful depending on the scenario. We've been using this as an example scenario. That would be crazy. I mean, even a hammer pounder going one right from the get-go and then having one, two, three, four can hit all of this area from here. That's pretty strong. Paratroopers. Any of Colossus infantry units deployed this turn are deployed on the lowest numbered enemy or empty strategic objective. Wow. Resolve deviation. Units deployed this way and deploy them in new squares. Very cool. So on this example, that would be really crappy because you would do the lowest numbered. So it would be this one that you're deploying them on. And they can deviate off the map and then they're gone. But... I mean, even being able to deploy here, here, here. Like, a lot of that would be good, and a lot of that's... Oh, they don't do missions. What am I thinking? That's cool and very thematic. Sudden Assault. During this turn, friendly infantry units without Rapid Assault gain Rapid Assault 2. Very... All right, a lot of movement-based stuff for allies. Rapid Assault 2, and it goes on to explain it. I like it. I, I, well, I like a lot of the themes. I think everything else I say still stands, but these themed cards are really good. I'm a little, I think, disappointed that there's only three themed ones with each one. Although I guess there'll be duplicates of these, uh, depending on how big the card like stack is. But whew, it really is very interesting. And now that's it. That's it. I have at least looked over everything. Well, I guess that's it. Um, I'm super happy to have made this stream and got it out there for you guys to see um then we got to review this i'm very excited for the solo mode um i think colossus is just really cool really thematic i'm very excited to see how it is to play uh jamie said that it was very hard in a lot of their testing but if you follow it to the to the nose this is probably a really good way to learn how to counter certain groups uh, there are certain things that don't really make sense but you're not playing a person you're playing an ai and as long as you're not doing a weird niche strategy to try to break the kind of rules that have been set up this appears at the basis basic basic of levels to simulate a game of river wars quite well if not be pretty challenging i'm going to be playing the heck out of this probably on the channel this will probably be how I cover each scenario and do a small review of it, is playing solo mode um, on that scenario and recording it. There's a lot of questions up in the air, uh, but this is just a review. Most of this is done. Yeah, uh, I don't know what else to say. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully where there'll be actual videos and things. All right, bye guys. If, if I see that, I'll know that it's goodbye time.